This is the island of São Miguel in the Azores, a collection of nine volcanic islands with a lush subtropical yet European feel. Where are the Azores? In the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, not very close to anything else. It's a green wonderland with maybe more cows than people. Hello friends. It's like Iceland meets Hawaii meets the Faroe Islands meets Ireland, which makes it the perfect spot for a road trip. Morning. It's a really nice day here up in the mountains. I'm looking at a green lake in front of me. We landed yesterday after flying all night. Right now, Garrett is stuck because Felix is asleep on his arm. I'm not, so I'm gonna go find us some breakfast in this beautiful, charming, amazing little town. Got it! Highly recommend the custard tart. Once the boys were up, it was time to go have an adventure. We're spending the next week exploring Sao Miguel, which is sort of the main island of the Azores. You've got beaches, lots of interesting food, beautiful surroundings and lakes and viewpoints. I mean, just look at this right here. We chose this town because it's a jumping off point for so many cool things, like the multicolored caldera lakes, so many overlooks. Hi! And one of the most famous hikes in the area. And we stayed several days because you never really know what the clouds might do. The thing about Azores weather is it can change on a dime. The only predictable thing about the weather in the Azores is that it is unpredictable. There's a website called Spot Azores that has webcams all over the islands to show you the most popular areas so that you can see whether the weather is nice or not before you choose to go. And the great news is it's almost always sunny somewhere. There's a natural hot spring in the area that we heard you can only access at low tide, where the warm water of the spring mixes with the sea. A bit telling that nobody is in there. The ocean was a bit rough to be safe. That really does look like a Portuguese man of war. I don't have the best of luck with jellyfish, although a couple people almost did try it. That's a jellyfish. But then they thought better of it. Still, this is located on the west coast where it's absolutely stunning and perfect for sunset. So the plan today is we're driving from Sete Cidades, and then we're heading to, is it Nordeste? Which if you just drove it straight without stopping, it'd be about an hour and a half, but we are stopping at a whole bunch of lookouts and a waterfall and a whole island I guess you could drive in a few hours, but we're giving it a week. I think even that will not feel like enough. What do you think? probably like 60 and it feels so much warmer and the birds are always chirping everywhere it's so like lovely and wonderful these little purple flowers growing it's just it's like fern gully do you remember fern gully from childhood <laughs> This waterfall is a definite must-see, and we learned after the hike down that one could actually drive it instead. It's kind of a steep one, so judge for yourself if you'd rather drive it or walk it. When I'm old, are you gonna carry me? Are you agreeing right now? Yeah? Okay, I'm taking that as ironclad. From here, there's another super famous lake. However, we knew thanks to Spot Azores that we wouldn't be able to see it due to the fog, but here's a stock video of it. But the other miradors and other waterfalls were totally awesome. I'm curious, you were obviously here five years ago. There it is. What'd you like about it? What made you want to come back with us? I'd heard some good things about it, about being just like one of the most naturally beautiful places on the planet. It has everything, it has the ocean, it has 
has geothermal activity, hot springs, such a unique place. It doesn't really quite remind me of anywhere else I've ever been. It's true, the Azores do feel distinctly their own. Not really how I picture other parts of Europe, until you get to towns like Nordeste. <laughs> which delighted the part of me that loves when everything is symmetrical and a little bit quirky. But back up, I forgot to show you the amazing place we'd ended up in the night before. I loved the vacation homes in San Miguel, and this one even came with a breakfast basket with bread they'd made in their own wood-fired oven, along with butter and milk from the local cows. It had two bedrooms and even a little avocado pillow for Felix. But honestly, the best part is outside. They had their own pool, and although it wasn't quite warm enough to go swimming, they really thought of every little detail. It's shampoo. Oh my gosh. It's absolutely a beautiful place. It's pristine. You look devastatingly handsome. From there, the next logical stop is the famous bubbling spa town of Fernas, with even more gorgeous overlooks on the way, and these are just full of content cats. Like so many cats. Maybe more cats than cows? When I think about yesterday My oh my And before you know it, you're in the town of Fernas. It's bubbling, boiling, and famous for volcano food, which I was excited to try later. That is steaming. <laughs> and then, oh my goodness, of course, cows right over there. It's crazy to see that there's a house and just behind these bushes, like a bubbling cauldron, like just built around this. I think they used it for cooking, for heat, for energy, so it's I actually can see why clever. They did build a town here. This conversation got me curious about the history. So many similar islands have been dominated, suffered from disease, and were ultimately colonized, but not the Azores. Settlement began in 1439 under the direction of Prince Henry, and settlers were mostly humble farmers from Portugal looking for a better life. There were certainly attacks over the years from rival powers, and there's some evidence that Vikings would have made it first but never settled. The lushness of the islands made them ideal for agriculture, and their position made them ideal for trade. During the Second World War, they continued to provide strategic importance as many of the islands were used as allied air bases. The Allied forces actually had planned to just overtake and use the Azores, and Hitler wanted them to, ultimately forcing Portugal to agree to the Allied use should mainland Portugal be invaded by Germany. Over time, high birth rates and lack of available land for farming led to immigration away from the Azores. But exploring today, it's obvious why so many people are trying to move here now. For the night, I definitely recommend staying in this institution that pops up on all the famous photos of São Miguel. And although the most expensive place we stayed, it was still only $200 per night for a two-room suite I didn't even realize I had booked. With fedora hats, a restaurant that, while beautiful, was honestly just okay. To be honest, it is so salty. And the best part? How's the fit? <laughs> a 24-hour hot spring that we often manage to get all to ourselves and even a tiny bathrobe for Felix, which while we're on the topic, I was just amazed at how baby friendly it all was. People loved Felix and I felt weird about busting out a camera and recording the heartfelt interactions, but suffice to say there were many and they were so heartwarming. Hello, headed inland a bit to go for a little waterfall hike near town. Wanna go? What's growing on the roof? There's a house. Oh dang, you're right. Post-apocalypse. You know. <laughs> a little bit. Either the last of us. <laughs> a lot of trails in here. There's the waterfall hike and then they all connect and go different ways. The taste. Not like Giardia. But he's like going after my pony. an awesome hike like two and a half miles and this island is just full of amazing hikes so it's hard to pick but I liked that one and now I'm freaking hungry let's eat some volcano food yeah look at this tiny cow there's a dish unique to Fernas where a stew is cooked underground 
using the geothermal activity to heat it. It used to be a way for locals to eat holiday meals, but now it's become a regular thing with local restaurants serving it daily. Cozido basically means stew, and while you can get it on mainland Portugal, you can only get it cooked in the ground in Fernas. It's good. It tastes like, um, like what you get at a roast dinner. It's off. There's a little bit of that earthiness to it though. Like it does taste a little bit like it's been a flame. The beef is my favorite part though. It tastes like it's been stewed for hours and hours and hours, which it has. As it turns out, Felix is eating all of the cozido. Like cannot get enough of it. So I didn't have super high expectations. The cuts of meat that were in there were really delicious, really flavorful, really tender. And that was my favorite part of it. They had taro in there. They had greens in there. They had cabbage, carrot. So the more I ate it, the more I thought it was really delicious. I don't think it's much to look at because it's boiled food, but it was a really nice dish. It was something I would definitely have again. The rest of our trip consisted of getting back to Ponta Delgada, passing by a pretty cool church and the Isla de Campo just off the coast. Remember what I said about there being nine islands of the Azores? Well, we've got more to explore with Flores next on our list, which just might be the most beautiful island of all, if we can get there. Ah!